All right, thank you, Jackson Holly. All right, everybody, clap your hands three times. Now, clap your hands five times. Everybody beat your chest. Yeah, that was good. Okay, I didn't have, like, an attention getter, so I just wanted to get your attention. But, uh, all right, tonight we're talking about the Beatitudes. Has anybody heard of those? Yeah. Okay, um, I know we've talked about them in fuel before, but uh, I actually think I learned a lot with the Beatitudes preparing this lesson for you guys. There's actually a lot more to it than what I thought because it just seems like a list of something in the Bible, and it's, like, really easy to read, and you're just like, oh, okay, well, yeah, sure, that's easy. But there's actually a lot more to it, so hopefully I can share some more with you. But uh, I'm going to cover a little bit of background information before we just jump into the list of the actual the, the Beatitudes. So the Beatitudes, it, uh, it all started when uh, it, it was a sermon Jesus gave. And it started, or they call it the Sermon on the Mount because Jesus was with, the, was with his disciples and he saw a big group of people coming. So he then walked up the mountain and with his disciples and that's where... With his disciples, that's where he gave the sermon to. And so, so here's some probabilities and some thinking about how that actually looked like. Uh, it's, it's kind of a little gray area, so I can't like tell you like for sure this is exactly how it was. But, but Jesus, uh, he gave the sermon to his disciples. And what some theologians think happened was because so he like saw a big mass of people coming. And so he wanted to go up to the mountaintop. Well, so... They said that this sermon actually probably covered several days. It wasn't just like a short little snippet. But, uh, and then somewhere within that time, the people that were going towards Jesus probably came up the mountain and eventually heard the sermon. And when he talks about he gave this to his disciples, it wasn't just like the 12 disciples that you think of. Um, I think on average, like they say roughly there was like, I don't know, like maybe like 100 people that were always kind of around Jesus, you know, as he went along. And that would kind of be quote called his disciples. So by disciples, it means a, a bigger group of people, not just the 12 that we initially think of. Does that, make, is that kind of making sense? So, so again, that's, uh, that's like a bunch of kind of probabilities. Um, I, I, kind of a little bit gray. I can't tell you exactly for sure, but that's what people kind of think happened. So now what we do know is that this sermon, this ser- sermon covered... It talked about position as in like popularity or like your status quo. It talked about, uh, he talked about money and authority. And Jesus talked about all these not being important in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And so when we look at Jesus' disciples, Jesus' disciples, they were uh, his closest associates. So they were the people that were always around Jesus. And Jesus was a popular man, right? I mean, whether people, I guess, liked Jesus or not, a lot of people knew about Jesus and what he was doing. So, since you have all these people that are really close to Jesus, it was probably very easy for them to be tempted to feel important or to feel proud or to feel possessive since they were close associates to Jesus. So that's why... Jesus had this sermon, and part of it was the Beatitudes, because he wanted to get something straight with his disciples, okay? So before we dig in, I want to pray, and then we'll start going over the actual Beatitudes, all right? All right, dear God, we just thank you so much that we can come together tonight, that we can just uh, learn and talk about you, and God, I pray that tonight, uh, God, I pray that I will speak truth. Um, I did my best to prepare this lesson, and to speak truth, so please, I hope I don't lead anybody astray, and uh, God, I pray that we'll have ears to listen and eyes to see, and Holy Spirit, I just pray for heart change. I pray that uh, you'll just create a change in us as we continue to dig into your word, and that uh, we'll start to transform ourselves and to mold ourselves to have the attitudes that you talk about, and so God, we just ask this all in your name, Amen. Okay, so in the Beatitudes, there's eight total. Hopefully I don't block you guys from seeing the slide. But I need you guys to flip to Matthew 5. Uh, Oh, there we go. Matthew 5, 1 through 12. I think I was blocking it. 
my body mass was blocking the sensor. So everyone turn to Matthew 5, 1 through 12. And it's up on the screen if you guys forgot what I said. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to read them. We're going to read the whole thing, and then we'll go back and break it down. Okay, so Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Okay, so let's break that down. So as we read the Beatitudes, there's, there's eight total that he talks about. And the first one, <clears throat> all right, the first one he brought up was, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, so does that mean like we're supposed to be depressed? Because I'm supposed to be poor in, poor in spirit? Does that mean I'm supposed to be depressed? No, no, no. See, these are people who see themselves as sinners, and they seek God for forgiveness. So somebody who is poor in spirit, they realize that they are a sinner, and they know they're messed up, and then they seek God's forgiveness. The second one, the second one, is blessed are those who mourn. So like, tears of joy, maybe? Maybe? No, 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 not tears of joy. So blessed are, the mor blessed are those who mourn. Uh, these are people who mourn over their sin, for they know it's wrong, and they turn to the Lord to overcome. So first, you're poor in spirit. You realize you're a sinner, and then you mourn because you know you're doing what is wrong. And so again, then you turn to God for strength to overcome that sin. So number three, blessed are the meek. What the heck is meek mean? I had to look it up. Uh, meek, meek means having or showing a gentle nature, not wanting to fight or argue. So if you're meek, you're not wanting to always get into arguments. You're not wanting to fight. You're not wanting to create all that. And you just want to be, you want to have a gentle nature. So when he says, blessed are, those, blessed are the meek, that means these are the people who put aside pride. They're gentle and they seek the Lord's, the Lord's will. And then number four, four is blessed are those who thirst for hunger and righteousness. So hunger and righteousness, do we just need to like eat our Bibles? Not quite. You don't have to literally eat it, but you better well know what's in it because those who thirst 
and hunger for righteousness, these are the people that seek what's right. And so how are we going to know what's right if we don't know what's in the Bible? These are the ones that seek God's truth and reject sin. And they live according to the faith presented in the Bible. So again, when you thirst and hunger for righteousness, you first have to know what, what that is before you actually know what you're going after, right? So number five, the fifth one he goes over is, says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. So merciful, does that mean I have to even be merciful to those who go against me? Absolutely. Because people who are merciful, they show grace to others. And they show grace to others because God ultimately shows grace to those who believe. Am I going too fast for those writing? Uh, yeah, you were going to write, but Alan was like, just like whipping right through them. Only if you wanted. Uh, I'm actually impressed you guys are writing down. Normally, you guys don't do that. Huh? Wow, you are good. I thought you memorized it all. Okay, anyways. I'll try to slow down. And if there's like one you're just dying to go back to, I can do that too. But I'm not restarting the whole lesson. <laughs> All right, so are we, are we caught up to five? No? Okay, so, so blessed, number five, blessed are those, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Okay, so again, I said, these are people who show grace to others. Because the reason why we want to show grace to others is because hopefully we realize the grace God has shown us as believers. I can go back. All right, number six. So number six, the sixth one he talks about are blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So I thought this one was kind of interesting because I actually, I looked up the definition of pure and uh, the definition of pure, or one of the definitions of pure is not mixed with anything else. So I thought that was kind of interesting and in how that kind of, kind of ties into being blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. But uh, have you guys ever heard where your treasures is is where your heart will also lie? So wherever we build up our treasures is where high, where basically wherever we spend all our time and money and energy, like that's kind of where our heart lies. So you think if our heart lies with God that we would be spending all our time, money, and energy trying to honor and glorify God. But uh, what this also means, I just thought that was kind of interesting, but when it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall uh, see God. Uh, these are the ones that are genuinely devoted to God. These are, these are the real believers, the real deal. They're the ones that have true faith, and they truly believe in God. And therefore, because of their true faith, they're the ones that receive God's forgiveness and get to look forward to eternity. So a true faith, that then gives you the forgiveness from God. And true faith allows you to be able to spend eternity with God. And, oh, 
I think I clicked it too many times now. All right, no, so number seven. The seventh one he talks about are blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. So blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. So peacemakers, this doesn't just mean necessarily having peace like among your friends, as far as like not arguing or just like creating peace. Peacemakers, it goes a step further than that. It means these are the people that are seeking to go out and share the gospel. They're, gonna, they're seeking to share the gospel with others so that others might encounter eternal peace. Because by sharing the gospel, that's the only way some people are going to hear about God and have the chance of receiving his grace. All right, and then the eighth one, the last one. Blessed are those who are prosecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I think this one, I think everyone kind of gets, but these are the people who are willing to stand up for truth and what's right. And they're willing to share the gospel no matter what the cost. So these are the ones that are also trying to seek to bring others to Christ. And when you do this, if you're actively, uh, if you're living out true faith and seeking to share the gospel and to follow Jesus' commandments, I can guarantee you at some point you will be prosecuted. Now that can look in a lot of different ways. That can just be hurtful words, or it could even be physically hurtful by force. Okay, we'll get to that one in a bit. Okay, so so Jesus gave this sermon. The reason why he went over these the Beatitudes is because people had the wrong idea of what it meant for being blessed. And Jesus was telling his disciples, don't expect fortune or fame or good health. I mean, how often, even now, do you look at wealthy people Oh man, they are so blessed. They have this huge house. Like they have everything they could ask for. Where I work, uh, part of the district we cover, part of the area, is called Mission Hills. And if you guys don't know Mission Hills, uh, it's like, yeah, it's the rich sea area of Johnson County. And I'm talking like mega homes. I mean, they look like, some of them look like a hotel. They have elevators in it and marble flooring. I mean, it's unreal, the things I've seen in these houses. They're huge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we ran a call one time, and the lady was in the basement, so we used the elevator to come out of their house. It was crazy. So, but I mean, like, when you go up to, like, I'll be honest, I've gone up there, I mean, and I'll just be in awe of, like, their house. And then you walk in, you're like, man, did you see the car in their driveway? Did you see all this? And it's just, and like you meet the people, and I mean, most of them are nice, but I mean, it's just easy to think just because they look like they have it all, all the possessions, all the money, or good health, it's easy to think, man, they're blessed. I know I'm not the only one that's thought that before. So, but then back then, they had the same process. Things haven't really changed. And that's why Jesus was giving this. Sermon of the Beatitudes. Now, Jesus did tell his disciples that they would be rewarded, though. 
but they weren't guaranteed to be rewarded here on this earth. And that goes the same for us. We will be rewarded if we are true disciples of Christ. But I'm going to guess to say you're probably never going to see that reward until you get to heaven. And honestly, even if that's the only reward of just getting to heaven, that's the only reward I need. So do not use money and fame or good health or your belongings to, as a scale of saying, of like rewards, like, oh, I'm rewarded because God blessed me with a house, or I'm rewarded because I don't have any, I don't know, or whatever, if, you know, just belongings or whatever, because I have this, or I have that, or I have good health. Don't use it as a scale of saying you're rewarded, that you're blessed. That should never be our reward system. And then as believers, you know, we should never use God's message to try to promote personal interest. And I think that's easier for people in a teaching situation to then use God's message as personal interest because it'd be easy to take that all that attention and, and try to use it to honor and glorify you than Jesus, who supposedly that is you're talking about. So <clears throat> an interesting thing, you guys might have been thinking this when we went through the Beatitudes. They seem to kind of contradict each other. Well, that's because God's way of living usually contradicts the world. This is something I would, yeah, this is something you should write down or remember. Because God's way of living usually contradicts the world. And as believers, if we're going to follow these Beatitudes, we need to be ready to contradict the world. We need to love others. We need to love others when others are hating them. We need to help others when they might be getting abused. Or we need to give when others are taking. So now you might be asking, so Alan, okay, now that we've gone to the Beatitudes, can I just follow like a couple? Because, I mean, a couple of them sound really nice, but like the whole being prosecuted part, that sounds awful. And I don't want to do that. Well, the Beatitudes, the Beatitudes are not multiple choice. You cannot pick and choose what ones you want to follow. Okay, Alan, so let's say I do them all. What does it mean to be blessed? You know, not worldly, but being blessed by God. Great question. Um, and we're not talking about happiness. That's not what we're talking about, because that's never promised in the Bible. At least here on earth. But being blessed means the experience of hope and joy independent of outward circumstances. Meaning, we don't base being blessed off earthly rewards, which we just talked about, you know, with our possessions, our money, our health. See, I'm blessed because I'm in the kingdom of God. My hope and joy comes from knowing that I'm a child of God. I'm blessed because I know I get to spend eternity in heaven someday. And blessed are the ones in the kingdom of God. So Alan, how do I enter the kingdom of God? I mean, you guys are, that's another great question. You guys have good questions tonight. So I want us to think back on their time when Jesus was giving this sermon. So back then, you know, they had kingdoms. They had people of high power. They had kings, queens, re religious rulers. Well, Jesus says... The kingdom of heaven is organized completely different than worldly kingdoms. Because in the kingdom of heaven, wealth, power, authority, good health, that doesn't matter. Kingdom people 
seek different blessings and benefits. They live by different attitudes. They live by the Beatitudes. So, these are always something to go back over to see if I'm really following these Beatitudes, if this is the mindset I have. <clears throat> and if you guys have more questions on this, I'd love to go talk and go further with you. Or if something just didn't make sense, I'd love to dig into it with it more. But as we leave tonight, I want to ask you guys this. Are you kingdom bound? And that's what I went in on. Let's pray. God, I just thank you so much tonight that we could talk. And uh, I pray that made some sense to the kids. And uh, God, if there's any kids that have questions, please, I pray that they'll just have the courage to come talk to me, Reg, and any other leaders, God, that we could just help them dig into this. And God, as we uh, now have heard about the Beatitudes, God, I pray that we'll live those out and we'll understand what it means to be blessed and to know that your way of thinking is completely different than what the world tells us. And God, it's so easy to get caught up into what the world does tell us. And it's easy to think that the world's right because so many people and television and movies and social media, they're all telling us things completely different than what you say. But God, I pray we focus on what you say and what you tell us. And I pray that we have attitudes that will make us kingdom bound. And God, that we are fulfilling the Beatitudes so that we may be entered into your kingdom. God, and just spend eternity with you. And God, let that be reward enough that we just get to be with you someday, knowing that by your grace, we are saved. And God, that you showed your grace to us, even when we don't deserve it. So God, I just pray again, God, that, that that's all we need. It's all we need is just to know that we get to be with you someday in eternity. So God, I just give this all to you. And I ask this in your name. Amen.